the, there is a rumor. Uh, there is a rumor that we need to uh, verify. So, yeah, yeah. So people have been saying it's been cancelled. No, it's not. It's it's on. To, to, uh, uh, everybody doesn't matter. Everybody who doesn't want to come up, we come out. I mean, that's fine. But we all gonna come. All welcome. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, praise be to God, no other God besides God. Assalamualaikum, happy Friday. Um, I was told to make an announcement. I guess whoever wants to show up to the meeting, they can show up. If they don't want to show up, that's fine, I'm going to talk about it here. You know, and um, I have my timer on, so inshallah I won't go over, because there, there is a lot to cover. I have more verses than actually what to say. Because you guys always make these sermons where I try to have you look at it from your perspective and your point of view, inshallah. And my, my first sermon, like God willing, is the odds is against us. And we know from like the Quran, the test is mandatory, 29-2. Do the people think that they will be left to say we believe without being put to the test? Most believers are destined for hell, 2384. Say to whom belongs the earth and everyone on it, if you know. The footnotes 23, 84, 89, believe in God is a valid only if one recognizes God's qualities as the fact that God controls everything. 8, um, 7, 17, believers who do not know God are really not believers. Most believers nullify their belief by idolizing such powerless idols as the prophets and the saints. So if the odds are against us, what's the best way to turn the statistics around, if they say, right? How can we turn the odds in our favor? And when I started thinking about this, is by mastering the basics. If we focus on the basics of submission and what was left to us from the messenger of the covenant and what we have in the Quran and not dive deep into other speculations and, and second guess ourselves, and just focus on the very basics of submission and we master that, then we can go into other topics, but everyone's not there. Now, I may have a problem not paying my zakat on time. You know, these little things, if we can improve on the small things, we can improve the major belief issue that we have inside ourselves and the weaknesses that, we're, that we were sent here with to improve on will be a lot easier. Now, the best example I can give you is like, let's say we, we take math, right? And we go through algebra, say, I got this. This, is, this is a breeze. And we never really master it. Then we go into calculus. You cannot understand calculus unless you mastered algebra, really. You can get by, but you're going to start speculating and things are not going to add up for you. And this is the way I see a submission, too. If we don't look at the basics, fundamental belief, anything else we're just diving into is premature. And we're just second guessing ourselves. I'm not saying that it's wrong to dive into subjects more deeper. I'm just saying if we want to turn the odds against us, we know if we do the basics, right? For some reason, these basics, we tend to fall off the path so easily that the majority of us, God is telling us, are going to go to hell. The majority of the believers are destined for hell. And it says, we only, and it also says in the Quran, that surely those who believe, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not reading the verse, surely those who believe the Christian, the Jews, 
uh, deserve strangers. Any, anyone who worships one God alone shall have, no, nothing, shall, shall have nothing to fear, and nor shall they grieve there be recompensation from the Lord. That's just a basic belief of God alone and believing that God controls everything. But somehow we fall off the path by idolizing our own opinion that God is their ego, 1623. Absolute God knows everything they conceal and everything they declare. He does not love those who are arrogant. Like we read in the Quran, we hear and we obey. But then we ask questions. What do you mean by dress code? You know? Is it, um, is it uh, weapons in my shorts are uh, like, like designer shorts? The Dior Gucci, you know how much I paid for those, right? Then we start getting into these heifer type of situations where we start questioning things, just hearing and obeying makes it a lot simple and easier. God, the only source of provisions. The idols you worship besides God do not possess any provisions for you. Therefore, you shall seek provisions only from God. You shall worship him alone and be appreciative of him. To him is your ultimate return. Now, I'm going over some basic verses that if we master these, we don't need to dive into other things to make it back and beat the odds. If we depend on anything else for our provision, or I read the wrong article and my stocks went down, or this article, this site is wrong, or I shouldn't have sold when they told me to sell, or I was read this close to dump my stocks and I would have been up this much. You know, but we know from the Quran that there's not accurate. Important criterion 924, proclaim if your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouse, your family, the money you have earned, a business you worry about, and the homes you cherish are more beloved to you than God and his messenger and the striving and his cause, then just wait until God brings his judgment. God does not guide the wicked people. 924, since the odds are, over, since the odds are overwhelmingly against any human being to actually believe and devote to worship God alone, 12, 103, 106, it is virtually impossible to see a whole family believe. Those most believe have been faced with the choice, either me or God, and the messenger. The choice is constantly stated by, stated by spouses of the believers, of the parents, the children, etc. Constantly the believers made the right choice. This is a mandatory test for all believers in 29.2. I was speaking to my sister who's visiting me from the Seattle area and her husband, and they said, I have a couple of questions about your religion. I heard you guys drink. I said, where did you get this from? <laughs> you know? Well, no, I hear you guys drink. We don't drink. Who said we drink, you know? We're probably more uh, conservative and more strict in our religion than you are. I said, well, how? I said, we don't believe in insurance. So you don't have insurance? I said, well, we believe that God protects us, and all, only God can protect us, and no one else can protect us, and we don't put our faith in anything else. Then they started asking more questions, and somehow, accidentally, I don't know, Sha Shaquilla said it was me who said, we all take turns giving the sermon. But I know I lost them, but God already knew they weren't meant to be guided. When they found out I was giving the sermon, it was, it was finished. <laughs> you know, like, oh yeah, this, this, this religion is, sounds way too funny, you know. And this is my older sister who raised me. Yeah, you, you, you mod. <laughs> You know, and I thought about it, wow, I wish I didn't say that because now I really drove them off the path. I could see it in their eyes. Like, the, maybe, maybe I thought I'd seen a little hope. They were interested in asking some questions about the basics of the religion to see where we, we, we differ and where the understanding is the same. But only God can guide. And 29.3, um, we tested those before them, for God must distinguish those who are truthful, and he must expose the liars. 29.4, do those who commit sin think they can even ever fool us? Wrong indeed is their judgment. 29.5, anyone hoping to meet God should know that such a meeting with God will most assuredly come to pass. He is the hearer, the omniscient. 29.6, those who strive, strive for their own good. God is in no need of anyone. 29.7, those who believe and lead a righteous life, we will certainly remit their sins, and we will certainly reward them generously for their righteous works. Why am I going through all these verses, right? This is the 
pretty much if we stick to this and we master these verses, we don't have to worry about anything else. If we can just stick to what we have and master the basics, the rest of it is not, we'll get there in time. It will be revealed to us in time. A lot of times, we, we tend to want to skip where we're at and go to a subject where we're not ready for. Imagine if Arash went to, you know what, I'm going to take a year off from medical school and I'm going to go join the... Doctors Without a Border and try my me me medical procedure, learn the, like, the teachings I learned in school without properly finishing everything. Imagine how many patients would go on his hands, <laughs> you know? And it's the same thing in our submission. When we skip to subjects that we, we haven't mastered the basics and don't have the understanding and we're just, it's okay to say, I don't know, I'm not there yet. That's really important instead of being argumentative Instead of saying, you know what, I'm not there on that subject. And that's something we forget to say a lot of times. Say, I don't know yet, and may God guide me there. There's nothing wrong with that. Fair weather friends. Among the people are those who say we believe in God, but as soon as they suffer any hardship because of God, they equate the people's persecution with God's retribution. But if blessings from you, from your Lord, came your way, they say, we were with you. Is this God not only fully aware of the people's innermost thoughts? When I first got the message, I was really happy and things were going really well. And then, you know, most of you got in the message. I'm sure this happened to you too. All of a sudden, you're tested. You know, you lose your income. You lose your business. Your family structure changes and stuff. Um, and my brother told me, ever since you started going to that majit, your life went to, I'm not going to use the word, but it went bad. It went really bad. You know, and this is exactly the verse they're talking about. 29.11, God will most certainly distinguish those who believe, and he will most certainly expose the hypocrites. 29.12, those who disbelieved and said, those who believed, if you follow our way, we will be responsible for your sins. Not true. They cannot bear any of their sins. They are liars. So for me to tell you that, hey, listen, I understand this topic. You just need to follow me. Don't worry. I got this, and I'll take care of your sins. What do you think is going to happen? It's not going to happen. I don't think one thing that we, we don't hear in our community a lot, and I like to hear it more, is, and this has to come from every individual, and I need to say this myself more often too, is that I am not there yet, and I don't understand this topic. I'm working on a lot of other issues, and I have a lot of other tests. I'm just not there where you guys are at. And that's okay. Instead of making a rash decision of jumping into something that you're not on that chapter, it's like skipping through a book and you're going to like the end of the book when you haven't read what happened in the middle and you haven't mastered and put together the understanding of what's going on in the bigger pay picture. Because God did not make the, like, like God did not, Create the, God did not create the religion to be hard for us. We all know that. We make it hard ourselves. Those who disbelieve said, those who believe, if you follow the way we believe, oh, I just read that, we will re re be responsible for your sins, right? So 29, 13, in fact, they will carry their own sins in addition to the loads of other people's sins for which they were responsible most certainly, they will be asked on the day of resurrection about the false claims. Now, some of the basic things that we can work on, or I can work on myself, is the ego. The ego is the worst idol. It's the last god we have to kill. And as simple as it sounds, why does God say this is the last god you have to kill? And we make it sound, well, at least I make it sound. I can't speak for you guys. I make it sound like, oh, that's easy, the ego. Yeah, I just don't have ego. But God tells you, this is the last God you have to kill. So me personally, when I look at some of these other topics, I'm like, if we just stick to what we know, I don't, I'm not there where you guys are at. I can't be wrong. But that doesn't mean I stay. We know we can't stay, stay stalemate and submission. You're either better submitted today than you were yesterday, or you're going down. That doesn't mean you're not striving in the cause of God, and you're not trying to give more in charity. You're not trying to commemorate God more. That doesn't mean we're just stalemates and just go with the cruise control. 
We're always trying to escalate to the next stage, but you have to do it in precise measurements. They only follow their own opinion. That's another big one. Fear. You know, if we master these things, the reason I'm going to repeat it, if we master these basic things from the Quran, we can't go wrong and we can beat the odds against us. Fear. Fear of loss of income. Fear of recession. Fear of, of um, our children getting hurt. Fear of this. Fear of that. Stingy. Greed. 32.13. Had we willed, we could have given every soul its guidance. But it is already predetermined that I will fill hell with Genesis and uh, a genus, a genus, sorry you guys for mispronouncing that. I know there are Arabic speakers who understand it, looked at me like you're crazy. <laughs> and um, humans all together, 32, 13, the majority of humans insist upon going to hell. I'm going to read that again. 32, 13, the majority of humans insist upon going to hell by choosing to ignore God's invitation to redeem them. God will not put a single person in hell. Those who fail to redeem themselves by de-announcing their idolatry and devoting themselves to God alone and fail to devote their souls to the practice prescribed by the Creator. We will have to run to hell on their own volatation. They will be too weak to stand the physical presence of God's energy. That's from the message of the covenant, and look how deep that, like that is. In verse 30 or 32, 13, God doesn't put any one of us to hell, but majority of us insist upon going to hell by worshiping our own ego, by worshiping our own opinion, by not we hear and we obey, by saying, by not accepting God's messenger of the covenant, by not accepting what information came through the messenger of the covenant, by not accepting the prophets. The mission of God's messenger of the covenant is to confirm existing scripture, purify them and consolidate them into the divine message. The Quran states that such a messenger is charged with restoring God's message to a prestigious purity to lead the righteous believers, Jewish, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Sikhs, Hindus, and others, out of darkness into light. Surah 513 and 6511. He is to proclaim that Islam, total submission to God, is the only religion accepted, acceptable by God, 319. So anything the messenger in the covenant has in the footnotes and the appendix is information from God. We can't say it's his personal opinion. And we can't say that these are, his, we don't have to follow that because that's just his, his opinion. We know we have to uphold all information given to us in the light of the Quran from the messenger of the covenant. Humans fail to make a firm stand. 20, 115, we tested Adam in the past, but he forgot and we found him indecisive. 2115, when Satan challenged God's absolute authority, 3869, you and I did not make a firm stand against Satan. God is giving us a chance on earth to redeem ourselves by de-announcing de Satan and upholding God's absolute authority, Appendix 7. Quran 72, 14, among us are submitters and among us are compromisers. As for those who submit, they are on the right path. Now, the reason I had this verse in there I, am, I don't want to sound like I want to compromise any wrong understanding or any wrong belief. What I'm saying is if we don't understand it, we don't have to jump into it. Let's focus on mastering, this is for myself, the basics. Once I can master the basics, I can gradually increase my soul and my knowledge in the Quran. A lot of times I find myself debating topics that I really don't understand. And I... And I imagine there might be someone else out here too doing the same thing, but I can say for myself, I clearly don't understand the topic. And I'm here debating, like, no, no, I gotta pick a side here. You know? 
And this is how we insist upon going to hell. Now, I know time is, um, I'm at 18 minutes, guys, so I'll make it a little quick. So I'm going to skip some of the stuff. 5323, as pointed out in the introduction, the human are rebels whose egos are their gods. And if we can, um, if we can master just the basics and gradually grow our souls without jumping into topics that we don't understand, at least for myself, we can beat the odds against us. A lot of people who fell off the path, it's not because they were drinking alcohol. It wasn't because they were committing adultery. It wasn't because they were gamblers. They couldn't just give it up. It was because they were stuck on a verse that wasn't what they understood it to be, and they doubled down on it. And that's where they went astray. Now, I know... Our time in this life, it seems like we have a lifetime of thing, but in reality, every breath we take is one second closer to death. And that's, the, and that's a reality. And I'll repeat that. Every breath we take is one second closer to death. 23, 1, 12. He said, how long have you lasted on earth? How many years? 23, 1, 13. They said, we lasted a day or part of a day. As for who counted, 23, 1, 14. He said, in fact, you stayed for brief, a brief interim, if only, oh, if only you knew. 23, 1, 15. Did you not think that we created you in vain, that we were not to be returned to us? We think we have all the time in the world. But in reality, this whole world is, in the end of the day, God's telling us it's less than a day, really. On that note, a turbo law, let's repent. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Praise be to God, no other God besides God. I hope my last um, a sermon, you guys understood what I was talking about, like God willing. And a lot of it is just the verses I really want to focus on. Now, I know the 4th of July is come, coming up, and um, I stole something from Submitters Academy, Armand's and Chloe's uh, class, you know. <laughs> And the um, article was called, or the school curriculum, the submitted school that uh, boycotts um, LGBTQ and this <laughs> great submitted school, <laughs> you know, and, and, and other things, you know. And God willing, as, as our numbers grow, we can all have more of a bigger structure of this kind of school to, to, to take our kids away from what's being taught in the schools these days. Weird weather saved America three times. We know the 4th of July is coming up, and we know that America is the nation of submission. And this is where the messenger of the covenant proclaimed and purified like the message for, for everyone in the world. <coughs> Most Americans are not aware how pre, uh, precious the situation was at times for the American Continental Army during the Revolution War. But sometimes weird weather can be a blessing, particularly when it comes from the existence of one of the United States of America's um, founding, uh, a foundation. Here are three times when, when the movement of the heavens helped America here on earth. The fog of Re the Revolution War. On the face of it, it may look like America was saved during the Battle of Long Island. General George Washington and the Continental Army, he commanded, lost badly. They were outnumbered by the British two to one. One-fifth of Washington's full force had been lost to death or injured or captured. And on the evening of August 29, 1776, they were pinned down in Brooklyn between the East River and the British Army. Though it rained, though uh, through rain had ruined Washington's earliest military pursuits on this night, Mother Nature did, ha did him justice in the form of liquid and gas from rain slowed down the British advance. They gave Washington time to, to plot an escape as the sun went down. Washington gathered 
every boot available to the, to the shore and to begin very quietly evacuate his men across the shore. As Ron, as Ron Chanshan, uh, Ron Cher, sorry, described in Washington's, Washington life, cloth was wrapped around hours to mute the sound and winds miraculously shifted so sailboats could slightly, uh, silently glide across the ri river. Washington ordered campfires to stay lit all night to trick the British guards into thinking they had been uh, moved. The plot to assassinate George Washington, how it was foiled. But they still wasn't, wasn't, weren't fast enough to beat the sun, which in, which in these pre-daylight saving years rose at about 5.20 a.m. Dozens of men were still waiting to leave, including Washington. When a glorious fog rolled in, it was so thick, one soldier reported that you couldn't see more than 20 feet. That was all the Americans needed to evacuate the rest of their troops. Washington was the one to board a boat to safety, and he and his army were free to fight another day. Frequently, when an invading army captures a city, they occupy it. For example, when Washington troops evacuated New York, the British occupied it for seven years. But not so when the British invaded Washington during the War of 1812. Why? The weather. Sure, the British in, in, invaded on August 24th, 1814. They set the Capitol building on fire, which at the time housed not only Congress, but the Supreme Court and the liberty of Congress. Then they set the White House alight, famously sending the first lady, Dolly Madison, running through, through not without a painting in her hand, as one may have heard. The next morning, the previous days, fires still smirling, the British troops continued their arson. And that's when a severe thunderstorm, a hurricane came barreling in, a pounding rain put out all the fires out. Wind sent debris flying, killing several British soldiers. Then a tornado touched down in the middle of the Constitutional Avenue, sending canyons into the air, which landed right on top of the British troops. Like this all happened, according to history. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly, right? Um, terrified British troops regrouped on Capitol Hill and decided to bail. The wind and rain continued as they headed for the damaged ships to sail away. The British admiral was upset and escaped to a residence. Great God, madam, is this the kind of storm to which you are accustomed to in this God-forsaken country, he said? Some historians say the British never intended to occupy the city, only to raise it. Others disagree. In any case, they were in and out in 26 hours, and the incident soon became known as a storm that saved Washington. Not just George Washington, but this was after. Like, this was a storm that saved Washington, the capital. Long street silent charge. Heading into the Battle of Gettysburg, now this is during the Civil War, another very important part in America's uh, foundation and keeping it together. Heading into the Battle of Gettysburg in July 1863, the Confederate General Robert E. Lee was aiming for a decisive win, one so big it would drive the Union to seek peace terms amongst lost cause apologist Lieutenant James Longstreet is the villain who dreading fouled the plan. But according to history, bizarre paranormal known as acoustic shadow well, Mead probably knows about this, acoustic shadow, if I'm pronouncing it right, may have helped play a bigger role in the defeat. As the summer heat bore down on the second day of fighting, Lee ordered Longstreet to attack Union troops at a cemetery hill and take the virtual empty little round top. Lieutenant General Richard Ewell and men were to make a show of force opposite them to split the Union troops, draw them away from the hill. Arrow was so, what was too big, what was to begin his action at the second of Longstreet artillery barge. Yet Longstreet did not take a long time to gather his men before attacking in the late afternoon. 
But according to history, the military expert Charles D. Rose Ross, for a long time after Longstreet had began his attack, Errol heard nothing. There was no, they were supposed to start an attack with cannons and everything, but they couldn't hear the cannons go off to, to give him a sign to come in and attack. I'm sure the Submitters Academy will, cor will like, correct me if I said anything wrong. <laughs> and basically, they were saved because their plan spoiled everything. They were supposed to give a signal where they're supposed to meet and attack, but they couldn't hear anything with the acoustic, um, what was it called? The acoustic sh shadow. You guys should, should look it up, and uh, it's pretty interesting, really. The next day, when General George Pickett went on his doom charge, his men were cut down by Union troops positioned perfectly and led around top. The very place Longstreet had barely lost from then on, the Union had the upper hand in the Civil War. Because of this and other acoustic shadows during the war, Ross wrote, one might even go so far as to say the acoustic shadow determined the course of the entire war. If these three things didn't take place, we wouldn't have the country that we have. The third one, if it didn't take place, there would have been slavery still in this nation, and there would have been a contradiction to the founding father fathers where every man is treated equal in this country. Overwhelming signs of God, 2164. In the creations of the heaven and the earth, the alteration of night and day, the ships that roam the oceans for the benefit of the people, the water that God sends down from the sky to revive the dead land, to spread it in all kinds of creatures, the manipulations of the winds and the clouds that are placed between the sky and the earth, there are sufficient proofs for people who understand. I think I understand this one. 2940, all those who disbelieve were doomed as the consequences of their sins. Some of them were annihilated by violent winds. Some were annihilated by quakes. Some were caused the quake to swallow and some were drowned. God is, not, God is not the one who wronged them. It is they who wronged their own souls. 34, 48. God is the one who sends the winds to stir up the clouds to spread throughout the sky in accordance with his will. And he then piles the clouds up the new. See the rain coming down therefrom. When it falls on whomever he chooses from amongst his servants, they rejoice. 5419, we sent upon the violent winds on a day a conscious misery. 1061, you do not get into any situation, nor do you recite any Quran, nor do you do anything without us being witnesses thereof, as you do not, you do, not do it. Not even an Adam's weight is out of your Lord's control, be it in the heavens or the earth, nor is there anything smaller than an Adam or larger than it is not recorded in the profound record. Even with the creation of this country and this 4th of July, we should remember how God played a role. Technically, they weren't supposed to win. Technically, the British outnumbered the Constitutional Army two to one. They were defeated, they were wounded, and they lost a lot of men. But we know God didn't let that happen. On that note, I come still a lot, let's pray. Allah Akbar, 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 Swata Ladin and Alam, Rain Madubi Alam, Web Darlin, Lark Bad Samiala Lemi Hamada, Lark Bad Lark Bad Lark Bad. Allah Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa bilalamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yom adin. Ya kana abdi wa ya kana stayin. Atan aswat al-mustaqim. Swat al-adin anantu alam. Ghair maktubi alam. 
Wabdalin, Allah Akbar. Sami Allah Lemi Hamada, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar.